Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. Today I'm investigating a core concept of Unity's rendering system, triangle winding. Triangle points are ordered, and that order determines if Unity will render a triangle or not, through a process called face culling. We'll look at the repercussions of this, and in the process, see how to disable culling for multiple different types of shaders. Before we get started, I want to thank you all for watching. If you're new here, I upload weekly game development tutorials, so consider subscribing and turning on bell notifications. I also recently launched a website that has a searchable list of tutorials. There's a link to it in the video description. I created this project with Unity 2020.1.6 F1 and Universal Render Pipeline 10.3.1. However, the concepts in this video are relevant for all Unity versions and render pipelines. If you're using a newer version, you should check the video description for any fixes that I've posted there. Meshes in Unity are composed of two data lists, a vertex buffer and an index buffer. The vertex buffer contains all data about each vertex in the mesh, such as its position, normal vector, UV coordinate, and so on. The index buffer contains a list of integers. Its structure describes how the vertices connect together to form triangles. Each entry is an index into the vertex array, and every three consecutive entries describe a triangle composed of the vertices that they point to. The order of these points in the index buffer is also important, as it describes the triangle's winding. Place the points in the world and look at them head on. Place your finger on the first point and then move to the second and then the third. The order that you rotate around the triangle, either clockwise or counterclockwise, is the triangle's winding direction. Note that the winding changes depending from which side you view the triangle. Unity uses this fact to cull the back face of a triangle, avoiding rendering it. Back sides are usually facing towards the inside of a mesh and are thus hidden, so disregarding them can increase efficiency. Unity treats the side with clockwise winding as the front face of a triangle. So that's the side it renders. Let's see this system in action. I've created a single triangle here and labeled its points. You can see that it's wound clockwise. If I turn the camera around, it disappears. This is back face culling in action. The opposite side has counterclockwise winding, so Unity doesn't even render it. Conversely, if I generate a triangle with counterclockwise winding, it's invisible from the front, but visible from the back. Notice that the back side of the triangle is fully lit. You might expect this face to be in shadow since it's pointing away from the sun. Well, lighting is controlled by the vertices' normal vectors, and the closer the normal is to the light direction, the more light its face will receive. Here, the normal vectors still point out from the invisible front face. If I flip the normals so that they face out from the back face, the back is now properly in shadow. Of course, if I wound the triangle clockwise again, the front face will be in shadow since the normal still points out the backside. It's important to realize that triangle winding and lighting are completely independent in Unity. So, sometimes you might want to disable culling, like when rendering leaves. Thankfully, it's possible. The method is a little different depending on the type of shader your material uses. The lit URP shaders have this simple drop-down in the material inspector, which allows you to set which faces will render. You can choose front, which is clockwise, back, which is counterclockwise, or both. There's a similar setting that you can enable for custom code shaders. Add this line to your shader's property block. Now, a dropdown will appear in the material inspector with the options front, back, or off. Note that this sets the culling mode which is opposite of the drop-down for the default lit shaders, which sets which faces will render. There's one more step to activate this setting in your shader. In the shader's pass blocks, add this line, which tells the shader to have its culling mode match the underscore cull property. Finally, we have URP shader graphs. In the Graph Inspector's Graph Settings tab, there's a little checkbox labeled Two-Sided. You can click this to turn off culling, Note that it's impossible to enable front culling with a shader graph, only back or no culling. Here's our triangle with a double-sided material. You can see both sides of the triangle, and notice that the back side has counterclockwise winding, 
Of course, they're both lit, since they both still share the same normal direction, which is pointing out of the front face. You might notice that the front face is still a little brighter. This is due to specular lighting, which depends on the view direction in addition to the normal and light direction. When all three vectors point nearly the same direction, like when looking at the front face, specular lighting is strongest. Now for certain applications, like leaves, which are naturally translucent, having both sides lit the same works fine. However, if you need the back face to be in shadow, it must have its own normals. The only way to do that is to generate a second triangle on the back. I call this a double-sided mesh. Two triangles sharing the same vertex positions, but reverse winding and normals. In this configuration, you can see both sides of the triangle, both sides wind clockwise, and both sides are appropriately lit. Be sure to only use single-sided materials with double-sided meshes, otherwise you'll get some strange artifacts. And that's about it for triangle winding, culling, and double-sided materials. Keep these tips in mind and leverage them to create your own shader magic. If you'd like to play around with this, I've uploaded the Triangle Builder script and texture in the video description. Next week, I'll apply these lessons to a grass mesh, giving it better lighting and shadows. If that sounds interesting, please subscribe and turn on notifications. How are you planning to use double-sided rendering or culling in your project? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I'd appreciate it if you could like this video. It encourages YouTube to recommend it and it really helps out the channel. I also want to quickly plug my Patreon. Don't feel pressured, your watching is more than enough support, but if you'd like to contribute, I've prepared some goodies, like early video viewing, voting power and tutorial topic polls, downloadable project files, and more. I really appreciate all your support. Again, thanks so much for watching and make games.